hello everybody and welcome to Talk About It Tuesday. This is season six, season finale, and I'm excited that you're here. I have a fabulous guest, Alexandra Dennis, and we're going to talk about uh, trusting your puzzle pieces. Yes, and it's going to kind of revolve around our careers, but um, and here she is, Alex. I'll bring you on in just a second. Um, I want you guys to know before we jump into it, I have an amazing deal going on right now with a coaching package to win this summer. So if you're wondering about your puzzle pieces, um, there's a really great opportunity to work with me uh, at an extra special rate. So if you're curious, reach out and let me know. It's all about how do we set intentions for the summer and hold boundaries. So with that, um, I just want to bring on um, Alex and we will we will get it hopping. Just Tuesday. All right. So thanks for joining for all of you now and after the fact. Hello, Alex. Hi. Hi. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? So far, so good. Everything is good because I have my reinvigorate candle. <laughs> I traveled with it. Like I literally brought it with me to my uh, undisclosed location. No, I'm just kidding. I'm in Delaware. <laughs> I'm in Delaware right now. Um, mm -hmm. Enjoying some beach action. Um, Jealous. <laughs> come on down. I'm serious. You call, like, we'll text after this. You're welcome. To come. Yeah, I'm like, I will be there. I need okay. a vacay. Okay, let's do it. We Yes, we need vacation. We need to take it. Um, and look, for, I just want to say first and foremost, like, I know you are a busy solopreneur, my friend, like you are like killing the game. And so thank you for taking the time to be on the really excited about this topic. Um, no problem. Yay. Awesome. So um, I, I usually you know, pass the mic over and I'm like, introduce yourself because I'm not going to do it justice. But it's like, you know, share with people like to, to, for them to get to know you a bit. And like, you know, what I often say is like, if you want to share like, you know, life experiences that kind of shaped you, that's one way to think about it. But how can we just kind of get to know who you are a bit more? Sure. Um, wow, well, that's a big one. <laughs> so I know. I know. I think every decade, like there's a new Alexandra that mm -hmm. appears. And so I know, like, I'm still learning myself a lot, but I also know um, where I've come from has built me into the solopreneur that I've turned into today. A lot of it um, stems from finding my passion, but giving myself the grace and time to be able to find it. And then learning to let go a little bit because I'm very much like, no, this is the path I'm supposed to take. And at first it was letting people tell me the path I should take. And then it was like figuring out that that's not my path, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I went into something that I thought I was going to love. And I did love it for like eight or 10. I did it for 10 years. So I was in fashion. I did product development for 10 years um, for Perry Ellis, Calvin Klein, Jones of New York. And then just realizing uh, it wasn't what I wanted to do with the rest of my life as originally thought, like, oh, that's what I have to do forever. I'm going to retire in fashion. And then it was just like, oh, man, you you're giving someone else so much control of your life. Mm -hmm. And so it was figuring out how to create something on my own. I wanted to use my creative juices, not just my problem solving. Mm -hmm. um, and so then I just started Avala and I was like, what are you good at? And that was a hard question. I was mm -hmm. like, what am I good at? I was like, I, I went to school, I found a career. I can't think of what I'm actually like good at, what makes me happy, what, and then it was like, well, what did you grow up with? And a lot of it was like all natural skincare that came from my mom. She's from St. Vincent. And so she basically raised us on um, natural hair products, natural skin products. And I was like, well, I at the time when I was in fashion, my whole day consisted of being around like luxury or like working with people who know what luxury is. And that was really my first exposure to um a different kind of lifestyle and so it was like how do I take something that is so not to say rural but like so homegrown so from the earth and how do I make that into a luxury brand like what is it that those products my mom always made what are they missing that would make me as a person who's in corporate like oh this is a perfect gift for my boss oh this is a perfect um 
item for myself or I can't, I don't have to hide it if it's in my house and guests come over. And so when I created Avala, it was trying to combine those two worlds, my West Indian heritage and trying to combine luxury items. And it was just like, oh, well, glass. Glass is clearly, to me, it shows me a difference between, like, when you're at Dwayne Reed and what you're buying and then what you'd buy from a Joe Malone. Um, and then I just thought about, like, what brands do I admire? So Joe Malone was definitely one of them. And I was like, so what's his brand missing that your brand has? And I was like, it's all natural. And then um, it went into, well, how do you scent things? Because my mom always gave us shea butter unscented. And I was like, I'm grown. I want to be grown and sexy. I want it to be scents that I love. I want something for everyone. And that's why I started scenting with essential oils. And I remember taking Memorial Day weekend and just playing around with scents. Um, and then I nailed the four or five of them when I four when I first started. The men, when I started selling products, were like, what do you have for us? And I was like, what do you guys want? And then we want beard products. We want this, we want that. And so I just, that's how Avala has gotten so big. I just kept listening to whatever my customers wanted and trying to figure out an all natural way of doing it that stays within the brand. And it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And, and every product has a purpose. Um, and yeah, and so now it's like, we have well over 84 products, including scents in different sizes. And um a lot of that journey comes from, you know, just finding myself. And, and then it's so funny because when you're on level one and you get to level two, you never really look back because you're so busy running, running, running. And then there are days where I look back and I'm like, oh, my gosh, if this didn't happen to you, you wouldn't have been here. If you didn't, if you went straight from, you know, before I was in fashion to a skincare line, I wouldn't have known, like, what does luxury look like? What, what are the experiences that I, I want my customers to have? And to ultimately being able to curate uh, an amazing product and understand like the purpose of the product. So that's a little bit about me. <laughs> uh, oh my God. There's so much in there that I, I, I totally want to dive into. I like, um, oh, let me pause and, and, and see where I want to go first. I, I think it's just sticking out really strong. So I'm just going to go there. Um, even though I want to go back to kind of, um, the earlier parts of your story, but this idea of like luxury um, and serving, you know, this idea of luxury and combined with like heritage um, is really beautiful. And I, I just, I can't help but think that like, you know, the heritage that you come from and, you know, many other, you know, uh, uh, in terms of women of color or, um, African American, you know, Caribbean American, right? Like luxury and natural and like accessibility to that and availability, you know, it just, it feels like really important to showcase like that luxury is available to all that like, I, I don't like, I don't know if, if, if you feel that way, if that's part of what's important to you, but it just, it really stands out to me. A hundred percent. I mean, now we have so many amazing, you know, black owned, women owned brands that are luxury. But at the time when I started, I didn't have any friends that were entrepreneurs. I didn't know anybody who was doing what I was doing. Um, my sister had her own. My sister was a big pusher of me becoming an entrepreneur. And I was just like, no, I don't see that in my cards. Mm -hmm. um, but when the concept came around, I really had to sit and think, well, these are the products that you grew up with. These are the products that you love. And again, it's exposure. So I was exposed to a world where it's like, no, darling, we do leather. No, we, 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 do, we always wear black to work. We, and it was just like this other level. And I was like, oh, I came in with like bright colors. I came in with like a loud laugh. And those are things I want to keep. I would never change that. But just recognizing that on a floor of maybe 85 employees, there's two black girls and um and the two black girls are the only two people from brooklyn like from new york and just realizing like what does that what does that mean if we have a hundred people in our friends and family circle and out of that maybe only two of us are around luxury and so but also having it so that uh, culturally because i mean like even something like shea butter culturally um it's something that West Indian Americans and African Americans will recognize. And then there are other cultures that have no clue about it. So I'm educating, but I'm also providing a, a luxury product that 
gives people comfort as well. And then also realizing, I mean, I get all the time pop-ups. Like, I have I have shea butter. I pay $5 for 10 pounds of shea butter. Why would I pay $25 for yours? And I'm like, I'm okay with that. But does yours smell this good? Is yours mixed with it? Are you, oh, shea butter's hard. I'm like, no, because I soften it. Like, I add other things to it. And then have, making it multi-purpose or also telling people, like, you don't have to use it as a full body cream. You use it as a hand cream. Use it as a foot softener. So it's just, it was really interesting at the time and mind-blowing that I couldn't name one all-natural luxury company um, that I would be proud to give my boss. And my boss was, like, a very, like, at the time, militant, strict, mm-hmm. razzle-dazzle, like, Joe Malone, $800 candles kind of person. And so it I was like, I don't, I can't think of one brand that I would want to give to him that would be like a gift that I, all natural and encompasses everything that Avala encompasses. And so now it's like, this is a gift, this is a gift, this is a gift. And I'm like, I'm constantly giving out, you know, people ordering gifts for people, gift for this person. And that makes me really proud that people want to spread it in that, in that way. But it was mind blowing mm. at the time. And I can't help but say, what an amazing deal because this is far under eight hundred dollars <laughs> and it's all natural no but yeah i love that. that that's so beautiful it's like it's like what i'm hearing is like like that what i'm hearing is like this appreciation for luxury right and this love for your like history and culture and like how can those things come together they don't have to be like either or or, or you know like and and it just it just feels like um yeah like your passions coming together and like do you get any pushback on that is it like but together i also have to understand where these pe- people who are giving the feedback come from so i get pushed back like oh why can't your products be in plastic mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, the demographic that I serve likes to recycle. Mm. And in the future, I'm hoping to add a mm. recycling arm to a bottle where you return your glass bottles and we refill them for a cheaper price. Helps me. I don't have to keep inventory of a million bottles and it helps you. You don't have to keep purchasing glass over and over and over again. Mm. Um, it's crazy. I get pushed back from that side. I also get pushed back from pricing and it's just recognizing like that you're just not the customer for me and I'm okay with that. Um, but yeah, you do face pushback, but I always tell, like, I got pushback, like, why don't you have colors in your logo? Why is it black and white? And I'm like, well, when I think of people's homes, the colors that could go into every single household or at work or in a bar or at the gym, because of all it goes way beyond your home, it's black and white. It's simple. It's effortless. Um, I wanted the product to stand out more than the packaging in a way. I wanted it to be very clean, chic, like you see it and you automatically know, like, I want people to see it and be like, oh, that must be, like, $50. And then be like, what? It's not. Like, <laughs> I wanted it. I knew what I wanted. And so you're always going to get pushback. There's, like, a billion people on the planet. You know, there's always going to be people who are like, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And I'm just like, no, no, no. But you have to be empowered enough in your brand and know what your brand is enough or where you want your brand to go to, you know, politely say, thanks for the feedback. But no. But no, thank you. Yeah, no, <laughs> thank you for sharing that because I think oftentimes what holds people back from pursuing like that whisper in their heart or what they're excited about is they start thinking about everybody's got a candle or everybody's doing this. Or I mean, I can say that about myself. Everybody's a coach now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, welcome to the club. Yeah. Um, but it just sounds like you're just like, look, I'm going to do me. Like, I'm going to honor what is it, what feels good to me. And, like, it doesn't really matter how many, whoever's out there. Because you're, like, clearly winning the game. So, like, how, like, was that a journey for you to, or did you have to fight some of those kind of messages when you first started or along the journey at all? Oh, all the time. I mean, when I first started, because nobody was doing it, nobody really instilled the confidence in me that I could do it. Um, a lot of West Indian households, my, uh, growing up, mine was very much, you could be a doctor, a nurse, not even really a teacher, but a lawyer, um, work in the medical field, and I sucked at science, I still suck at math, um, and I went to school for it, and I just didn't really enjoy it, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is what my life is going to be like every single day, and then 
when I told my family, I actually created the entire line in my, well, what was the original line in my head first before I even told my family that I started a business. I was already selling by the time my family and a lot of friends found out that I started a business. And the amount of pushback, you know, you, I, you, I told like one or two friends and they were supportive, but then they were like, how are you going to do this? Well, where are you going to sell? Well, how are you going to make it work? And I was just like, these are a lot of questions for a brand that just started like 24 hours ago. <laughs> um, and it wasn't, it wasn't so much they weren't supportive, it was fear. Like they mm-hmm. feared for a black woman to potential, potentially spend her entire day working because you're going to corporate job, you're working, you're going home, you're working. And a lot of people didn't understand what I was trying to build. Mm-hmm. And so, and sometimes I didn't understand. Like I knew what I wanted, I knew what I wanted to look like. And I'm just like, I want it for your home. And now that I look back at it, it's like a ball is in bars, restaurants, homes, gyms, wedding venues, hotels. And it's really cool, but it's like, it started from a little seed of, I just want this in your home. Mm-hmm. Like, just let me in your front door. And now yeah. it's everywhere. And um, there's something I really want to pull out there because I think, especially right now, right? There's a lot of people that are kind of reevaluating what am I doing in my life? Like, what do I want for myself? You know, and, and um, you know, this idea of, when we have these ide- when we have seeds of ideas, it's very vulnerable to share, and so we have to be very discerning and very careful about who we share it with, or, or, or it will get crushed. And what I'm hearing you say is like you kind of knew that you were going to get certain responses from certain people in your life, and you were like, "Let me hold on, let me hold on, and make sure that's fully baked." Because honestly, I need to, like love my husband and talk about him here all the time, but like I better make sure that. Ain't nothing gonna shake me before I give him the seed of an idea because he goes right to the how and da 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 da. Mm-hmm. Soak in the what? Mm-hmm. You know, he to soak in the 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 vision before it gets crushed by like logistics. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's it's deep. It's concern. I mean, it's finances. Mm-hmm. Like if you're taking money, like you you already have a corporate paycheck of fifty to sixty five thousand. And you're like spread thin on rent. And now you want to take a portion of that and start a company or where is it going to fit? Where are you going to make the product? Um, what are the guidelines you have to follow? Um, who's your customer? Where are you going to sell it? Like I, Kamina, one of VK Kamina was one of my friends who was very supportive about um, starting my brand. I, she was actually the first person to place an online order. Oh, and I, I set up, oh, I set up BK, a BK, website. Kamina. <laughs> I set it up. And I was sitting there looking at the website, like, nobody's buying. Everybody says, get a website, people will buy. And I'm like, nobody's buying. And then the first order that comes in, I'm like, all right, I got, you know, I got her support. And there were friends I have to this day that have never bought a product. And it's okay. But when you have, like, an inkling of passion or something that you want to do in your life, just do it. Like, I, but to, I must, don't try to plan it out to a T. Because it'll, it'll never go the way that you want it to go. But... I do believe that hard work, resilience, and thinking forward are going to be things that you desperately need. Um, Customer service is something that I feel like our community is lacking sometimes when it comes to products. Um, I have a Chase mentor, and she's always asking me, like, what what makes your brand different than all the beauty brands that are out there? And that's a question that always flusters me because it's like, I could say Shea Butter, but all these brands have shea butter. I can say it's luxury, but now there's so many. And it's like, well, versatility. Like I said, it it started off just being in your home and now it's in a hotel. It's in a bar. I have people at bars taking pictures of the hand sanitizer. Like, yo, you're here. Um, I see all you had a pop up. You're in this part of Brooklyn, that part of Brooklyn. My friend gave it to me in Texas. Um, And so versatility for me, because I don't really see a lot of beauty brands doing that at all. Um, and then I always try to think of weird places to be. I try to make myself uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So it's like, where can I go that is going to be weird? Like people won't expect to see me there. So like the bars, like when the, when the pandemic first started, they were like, I hate, I hate the smell of hand sanitizer. And I was like, Hmm, well, if I put, get an extra strength alcohol hand sanitizer and we sent it with a ball of scents and essential oils. And then all of a sudden um, Brooklyn Gems in Brooklyn was like, oh, we'll, we'll buy our hand sanitizer if you match this other corporation's price. And I was like, 
bet you're going to be a part of the marketing budget. Like, I don't make really a profit off of it, but it's somewhere I already go to hang out. And I was like, that's going to be part of my marketing budget. And then people take pictures. There's, like, a QR code people follow on Instagram. People are like, I've seen your brand somewhere, but I can't remember where. And it works. Like, everything can't be monetary. Sometimes things work because you gave away something for free. $20, $25. I feel like sometimes people are so, I got to make money. I'm going to hold on to every dollar that you lose out opportunities sometimes. Yes. Well, and what I love, I love that th there's, a, there's, there's bigger, there's bigger ideas behind what you're doing, right? Whether it's, again, this combination of luxury and West Indian uh, heritage, whether it's, I want to be in places that make me uncomfortable, or whether it's, uh, you know, like, I want to look at this as a growth opportunity, as opposed to like, am I squeezing every single effing dollar out of it? Like, that, that I think that those are the things that that we can lean on whether we have our own business or we don't like what are the bigger picture views of what we're trying to do and how do we anchor to something bigger um something more meaningful as a way to to really understand is this for me or is this not for me will, will this make sense or will this not make sense um and so i just i just love that you're sharing that and you know i want to go back to to like even because right now, like, you're killing it, right? You got, like, all these skews, right? Like, you have all this clarity around, like, what is this brand and what are you trying to build? And, like, and I know you're very philanthropic with what you do. Um, there's so much give back. There's so much give away. There's so much there. Um, but I know, and, and this was all about, like, trust your puzzle pieces, right? I know that, like, it was a journey to get there. And you talked earlier about, like, not really wanting to be an entrepreneur that was never in the cards for you. You were expected to be a doctor or something of that nature. So and so that like you could go and do this because you started it while you were working and then you, you went full time with it. But like, what was that journey like? Because I think it's great to hear how our our roads are so windy and we try to make sense of them when we're on it and sometimes it's only in retrospect that we can really do that i mean personally for me i dropped out of like my mom was very much you go to college you go to college in new york and then you're and i dropped out of college because i hated uh what she sent me to college for which was nursing mm -hmm. sucked at it um did a bunch of odd jobs. I was always a hard worker. I would have two or three jobs at a time. I think I worked on Wall Street. I worked for a PR company. I worked at a gym on the weekends. I was always a hard worker. I just didn't have any, like, I couldn't, I had no perspective on what I wanted to do. And I always tell people now, like, people will say, like, I want to start a company, but I don't know what. And I'm like, well, think about what you're good at. But don't force yourself to start a company because you think you're going to get so much more freedom. I don't have as much freedom as people would think I do. I spend a lot of time working. I miss birthdays and holidays. Um, and so I just think you have, like, interesting my puzzle pieces. When I dropped out of college, when I dropped out of college, I had no clue. Then I worked on Wall Street as a receptionist, and I thought it was such a cool job, but I was the only woman on my floor. Um, and then I went back to college for finance, flew through that, and then I was like, I'm going to Brew because that's the, you know, that's the business school. Um, and then I was working for this slightly abusive boss who would throw stuff, not at me, but at other people, which I didn't like. So I was like, time to get out of here. And then like slightly abusive things being thrown abusive. in the office. Okay, great. He yeah, threw his phone and whizzed past my head one time. He wasn't even mad at me. He was mad at somebody else. And he hugs the phone and throws it. I'm like, oh, hell no. Did that just feel the breeze? <laughs> um, so then, uh, I started applying for jobs and my dad we used to wear Periellis when I was a kid and I saw a job came up for Periellis. It was an internship. And I was like, girl, you live alone. You have bills. You're paying your way through college. But I was like, just apply for the internship for the fun of it. And I applied for the internship and I applied for a bunch of other jobs. The day that I applied for the internship, they called me, asked me to come in right away for the interview, hired me like the next day and said, you start on Monday. And I was like, Oh my gosh. Um, okay. And then that worked out and then did the internship. And my last week of the internship, um, my boss was like, okay, we're finding you a job in the company. And I was like, okay. 
And I had then I had just applied to Baruch and I was calling them every week. Like, why are you guys not telling me if I got accepted or not? My GPA is crazy high. Like, I, I, you have to take me CUNY to CUNY. And then I kept calling. And then one day I called and she's like, oh, somebody forgot to check a box saying they got all your documents. Our bad. And I'm like, oh, okay, so I'll get my results, you know, soon. And she's like, oh, no. She's like, the deadline passed. And I was like, but I need to go to school. Like, I finally found what I want to do. You can't, like, tell me I can't go. And she was like, you can apply for next semester. And I was like, okay, fudge. But then when I did the interview, they said the only way that I could get the position was if um, – I was in school. So when I went to the Perry Ellis interview, they were like, yeah, we only give school credit at the time. Like now you have to pay insurance at that time. It was only school credit. So if I hadn't, mm-hmm. if I had gotten into Brooke, um, I would have never been able to get into Perry Ellis. Um, and so I was just like, Oh, these things work out. But I didn't learn that until like six mm-hmm. months later, looking back. Mm-hmm. And I think every couple months or every year or so you need to look back and make little connections. Mm-hmm. Um, so Perry Ellis, then I left there, got laid off because fashion industry is high, high layoffs. Um, went to work for a stylist for, um, her name's Alexandra, and she was like a, a head of Vogue and all this other stuff. And I hate, I did it for like a month and I was like, I'm out of here. I thought it was gonna be so cool. I was like, fashion is so cool. I want to work for a stylist. And I was like, nah, not for me. I was like, there's a lot of running around. But that was also a taste of luxury because I had to go back to stores that were like mm-hmm. Bergdorf's and give back stuff. And I'm like, oh. And it was me as a black woman, I felt uncomfortable going into those spaces. Mm-hmm. And I was going for a woman who wouldn't see that in a way. So I'm showing them mm-hmm. jeans and t shirts because I'm an intern. And then it's like, return this to the Louis Vuitton store. And you walk to the Louis Vuitton store and everybody's looking at you like, can we help you? And I'm like, I'm returning this for a stylist. <laughs> um, and then from there, they had just been bought by a bigger company. And so uh, the first thing I said to my boss was, she's like, I want to hire you. And I'm like, I read in the newspapers, you guys were bought by a finance company. I worked in finance. So are the layoffs over and done with? And she's like, yeah, it's done. I was like, great. Six, less than six months later, six months later, laid off everybody, including my boss. And I was just like, oh man. And then I went and worked for um, I had a friend at the time. I went to work for um, Calvin. And then working for Calvin, I was just learning. That was where I worked physically on, like, luxury goods. But by the time I got there, my resume was already – I didn't go to fashion school. So I had no skills in fashion at all. And I learned. And I would ask all the questions. And I would ask them from every team, not just my team. And so by the time I reached Calvin, it was like I had experience in menswear from Perry Ellis. I had experience in um, licensing from Perry Ellis. I had experience in, you know, leather goods. So I was bringing like all this information in one head. And just like, I didn't go to fashion school, but this, this is all the skills I have. Mm-hmm. And part of trusting that journey is what led to Avala being created. And when you look back, and I always try to look back, um, I look back to go forward, I can piece together like things at the time I felt like this is devastating, or, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do now? Or this makes me sad, or this wasn't part of my plan, or I did everything correctly, and my plan still didn't work out, and I don't know why. And I was very much, like I said, I used to hold on to that stuff tightly. And now I'm just like, yeah, it'll happen when it happens. <laughs> it's like, yeah, sure. Like, I was even getting ready for this interview, and I was like, Are you, aren't you nervous? And I was like, no. And they're like, um, don't you have to prep? And I'm like, "Like, I got to clean a seat and sit down. Like, you know, it's we're talking about me. I know everything about me. <laughs> yes. um, so it's just, but a lot of times the, the giving away of the product or the meeting of people in my life, um, and I always say be kind to everyone. Don't think like, oh, I don't have to be nice to you. Like, that person could know someone who works at CBS who, like, might not say anything at the time, but give your product, and then all of a sudden you end up on the news. Like, you should, you never know where people, especially, like, even for me, I always wear jeans, t-shirt, ripped jeans and a t-shirt, and it's just, like, nobody would sit there and be like, oh, she she's gonna have a huge empire one day. Like, but that's, it's New York. It's very New York. Yeah. You sleep on someone, and then they turn out to be your boss. Or like your future um, competitor, and and I also don't brag a lot, so 
<laughs> people are like, wait, what? Um, even Danielle was in the, the circle. She's like, oh, Alex has done this, 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 this. And I was just like, oh, here we go. <laughs> well, but you always have to look back at those things. Well, yeah, and in a way, well, I just want to pause on that. There's, there's several things in there, but I just want to pause on, like, yeah, like, you know, you know, there's a difference between, like, you know, this humble, this, this humbleness, and also, like, I, I feel like people need to hear your story. They need to hear, like, what you've done. And I say you as, like, like right, just in general, right? Like, and you, specifically. But, like, if we if we are so humble that we're not sharing our wins and we're not sharing what's possible, then, then we're not providing an opportunity to be a role model to others to say, maybe that is possible. And I connect that to this idea of like, you know, you travel the, the road less, less traveled, right? Like that, yeah, you didn't go to fashion school, but it doesn't matter because you could, you could find another way because we're, I think, we stay so limited in our beliefs about what's possible because we're only shown this one way to do that thing or there's this one pathway. And if you don't, if you don't make that pathway, then forget about it, which isn't true at all. You know? No. And, and I mean, Avala is like, self-funded. Huh? I said Avala is self-funded. Like I've never taken a loan from a bank. I've never, I've had one angel investor. I've won pitch competitions. Um, my, my corporate paycheck started it. But, like, the customers are honestly what has kept Abala going. And every time it's around, it's like, you should get a bank loan. You should, and it's like, yeah, when, you know, I, I'll apply. But it's yeah. it's the freedom that I don't owe anybody anything. And showing that, hey, you might not be able to move as fast as you want or build as quickly. But to me, sometimes the best path are, like, where you set a strong foundation and build off of that. Like, Avala is not something I'm just going to do for 10 years in my head. It's something that I want to do for my life. And I want to pass um, um, other people's families. Yeah. And Sorry, so. there's like a... No, hold on. No, go ahead. There was, like, a delay, so... Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, it always has something I'm just like, oh, this is my 10-year plan. This is a long-term plan, so in order for it to be long-term, um, it has to have a strong foundation. So now I, this year, I've said, is my year of learning. And so I, I started the brand. That was my year of creativity. Um, the second year was COVID, and, and then all of a sudden, I got a lot of publicity from Cosmo, Harper's Bazaar. But again, that was networking. Nobody can tell me... Um, anything bad about networking, even if you have a bad experience, mm -hmm. because networking for me has gotten me through to so many opportunities. I can't even name them all. Like Danielle, my first intern I got from Red Hook Initiative. They help young adults with building their own um, careers. They might not have gone to school. They might have like um, no idea what they want to do with their lives. I've been there, so I like giving back in that way. Then my first intern was Penny, but it was amazing. And I had a launch party. She helped me with the launch party. Hanifa's aunt came to the launch party. She brought Danielle, who runs mm -hmm. the gym. And then Danielle was like, yeah, I'd like your soap in my bathroom. That was my first, like, corporate anything. And I was like, oh, yes, a gym. And then, um, but then meeting Danielle has led to so many opportunities. And when you think of it, it's like, if I didn't meet this person, so then one of the members of Danielle's gym, Love My Products, told me to go to a store called The Spot in City Point Mall in Brooklyn. She's like, my friend owns it. You should go and see if you can get some of your products in. I go to The Spot, and The Spot's like, yeah, we like your products. We'll do this, 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 this. While being at The Spot, they were like, hey, we're doing the ticker tape. Was it the last, last year they had the small business float in the parade? They let me be in that. They had a meeting with MasterCard. They let me be in that. I just did the pitch competition. I came in second place. I got $500 for that. Like, you never see, like, all these little moving parts that are, like, building you. But it's because of networking. This one person. And if you have quality product and quality customer service, and just be yourself. You don't have to be extra. You don't have to. Like, it's just me being me. Like, I'm, I'm just not yeah. all the time. And so you being you people see the genuineness and then they're like oh i love her product i'm not scared to push it to another person or another person or or i'm afraid that your brand you're gonna fall flat because you have confidence in the brand so it's just one of those things where you just keep building like networking for me has been such 
an amazing op- and that leads to so many opportunities and there's things I can't afford I, mm-hmm. I can't afford it and then people are just like I know you can't afford it but you know what you're gonna help me out do this this and I'm like cool what do we need to do how can we work mm-hmm. together how where, how do we make this happen well and I just you know just want to pause and reflect a little bit speaking about looking back right like because I feel like this thread, this thread that I'm seeing that continues like in, in just your your life story and also in the story of Avala is just is just doing things differently. It's just it's just not being constrained by how others have done things uh, and and feeling like that's the only way or that you're wrong if you're not doing it that way, like whether it's, you know, go to school, drop it out because it's not what you want to do to like. You know what I mean? To just going after the job because just like, why not? And, you know, to, to, I'm not going to take VC money. I'm going to, I'm going to wait and, and, you know, let my customer support me and see what's possible there. Like, and these are all just paradigm breakers. And I mean, I'm quiet, but... a, huh? <laughs> I'm quiet, but I have quite a fight. <laughs> Yes, yes, you're, yeah, like you're the you're the fighter. Well, what's the thing, you know? Um, yeah, like, well, clearly, right? To you're tenacious, and clearly you have grit, and clearly you're willing to take risks, and you're tr- willing to try new things, and you're willing to get uncomfortable. Um, and this idea of just threading back to these puzzle pieces, and what I hear you say about networking is that that what if we look at everything as an opportunity? And, 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 I, and I hear uh, like messages of also non-judgment, like who knows what this is supposed to be or who knows who this person is or what they're willing to do or be or negotiate with me. Um, and it feels like, and you tell me if I'm sensing this right, but it feels like that's what's created doors for you is just holding space for what's possible. I'm sorry, I just blinked out a bit. <laughs> I said I heard holding space for what's possible, and and being willing to to connect. I mean, I think connecting is something that we're missing a lot these days. Um, whether it be technology or mm-hmm. being trapped inside due to COVID, um, and I think sometimes now it's the it's breaking down in a way like we're not as to me friendly as we could be to each other. We don't give as much grace. We don't try to understand other people from like what other people are going through yeah. from their perspective. Um, and so like with my customers with the body butter, they'll be like, I have eczema and I'm like, Oh man, like that sucks. I don't have eczema, but I've had a lot of people who have eczema tell me they like this product. Like it's not always like, I don't understand that struggle, but I know that it has to suck to go through something like that. And so that's where me and my customer make these deep connections that are, you're my customer, yes, but now you want me to do your baby shower. Now Avala will be forever in the pictures of a joyous moment in your life. And I don't take that for granted because I know I would be, I don't want Johnson and Johnson at my wedding. I want, you know, someone that I, I could build or like love to see grow i know my customers love seeing every time i i hit a milestone um me growing and so oh it's so funny so um izzy just joined and izzy was where i first started doing pop-ups um Mm -hmm. at 727 franklin avenue and then years later now my product is sold there at a store called 727 franklin and amani market and when i went to the drop off i was just like wait a second I used to do pop-ups here. And it's just so funny when you, your future, and you look back at your past and it just mm. brings you forward and it gives you an appreciation. Mm. I mean, even every year I try to like throw an idea out there. And two years ago it was, oh, I want to be in like some magazines or something. And then that year it like happened back to back to back to back for months. And then the end of last year, I was like, kind of want to be in hotels. And now it's like, it's happening. And you're, I'm in, you know, a hotel that I'll announce soon, but it's just like, and two hotels actually are working with me now. So it's just sitting there and like making these, but it, I'm moving so fast that I'll sit down and I'm like, Oh my gosh, you asked for that. And it's like not sitting there, not putting the pressure on yourself. Like now I got to go try to hit up every hotel and I'm going to give out thousands of dollars in product to get their attention. And, and it's like, no, it was both opportunities were from networking. 
and meeting people that knew one of them was a chef um, in the Marriott uh, for the Marriott's and she curated their menus. And then the other person works for the veil right now. And so it's just like meeting people. And, and like I said, when you meet these people, she owns her own um, a Caribbean Mexican uh, food place by my studio. And I would just come in and talk to her every day. Like, Hey, I want a salad. I love your food. Da, da, da. And for a year, and then all of a sudden she popped for a year. We talked all the time and I would be like, you should do this. And she's like, Hey, I saw this camp, this candle video on YouTube. You should do that. And all of a sudden she's like, I'm so stupid. I used to work in the hotel industry. I could connect you with somebody. Uh-huh. And I was like, cool. <laughs> At the right time though, it was the right time for me to make a leap to do again, something different and something uncomfortable. But it was someone I knew and who trusted me this whole time. She was using my products, but she just never thought to connect the two. But in the right moment, it happened. And you just have to trust. In a lot of that, you have to trust that you have the ability to do it. You have to trust that you just put your intention out there and hopefully it'll happen. And when it doesn't happen, sometimes I just say it wasn't meant to happen. Then. Right. Well, I'll, yeah, it, you know, there's a couple things in there, right? Like this idea of divine timing, this idea of like not forcing up. If, it's, if it didn't work there, it's, it's in your best interest. And how do we kind of rewire our brain? Because we often create like the worst story about like, you know, when things don't happen. And it's like, no, what if we just like, allowed it and didn't, you know, resist it and just accepted it and saying like, that, that must be me. That must mean something better is for me. Or that must mean this is, this rejection is protection, but we don't tell ourselves these stories. We, we get so hard on ourselves. Um, and the other thing I just want to pull out of what you're saying, especially like today is new moon. I kind of follow the moon cycles as a way of like reflecting and, and new moon is, is a time of like new intentions. And often that, that, that means like looking back and saying like, where was I this past month and where have I come to and like, what do I want moving forward? And, and like you said, just honoring, um, what have we done? Like, wh- you know, what did we manifest? Cause there's, there's things that we, we create that we manifest and then we don't even honor that we actually did that, you know, like, and, you know, I think especially as we're entering summer, it's like, can we just honor where we've been so that we can give ourselves grace, as you were saying, to, to take some time off, to relax, to like, to just be with that it is enough, that we are enough, you know? And, and I think coming from you too, right? Being an entrepreneur that's always on, like, like you know, giving, giving yourself that, giving ourselves that because, because it's, you know, it's a hustle, right? It yeah. is. I mean, four and a half years in, and I just started taking Mondays off. Like, I, my first year of Avala, I did pop-ups here and there because I was still creating the brand. The second year, I worked seven days a week. So I did pop-ups every weekend. I worked a full corporate job. I would literally go home at 5, like 6 p.m., take a nap, wake up at 10, make products till 3 a.m., go back to bed to get ready to go to corporate again for 6 a.m. And I did that for a year, and it made me so miserable. But honestly, sometimes when people are like, I'm tired, and I'm just like, you don't know what tired is. <laughs> but I also have to give people leniency. So I, I can't put push that. I would never want someone to do that schedule. So I'm just like, but it's like, if you've done two hours of work and you're like, I'm tired. I'm like, okay. I hear, I hear you. It's, 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 it's being, le- it's, I don't have all the answers. I never do. Um, and so it's just, especially as a woman, I feel like you want to, always come through you want to always give a hundred percent and there's just it, there has to be somewhere that you are giving yourself the leeway to take time for yourself not feel bad take yourself out to a, a great dinner if that's what what makes you happy um sleep late if that's what makes me happy um have a glass of wine have a bottle of wine sit in your tub sit in the shower and cry if that makes you feel better use a shower steamer like uh, we take so much for granted because we're so busy trying to hustle and grind and make it that you turn around another year has passed and another year and another year. And then by the time you make it, you realize you didn't enjoy the journey at all. Mm. So it's like, I'm doing what I love, but it's still work. So you're sitting there like, I do what I love, but now, you know, this year I've been taking out time to learn, like I said. So learning, taking the hours to learn takes away hours that I can work but 
it makes me happy. It's another networking tool. It makes me happy to actually start to understand aspects of business that business is great when you can just be creative all the time, make product and make money and meet people. But then it's like, what about the paperwork? What about the taxes? What about marketing? What about a strategy? What about a business plan? Like there's so many people I know who don't have a business plan. And I'm just like, my, you know, having a mentor. Um, and those are things I call, those are my personal things. Those are the things that I want to learn for me, for my company. But it's also my personal time to dress up, to get out of jeans and a t-shirt and put on a dress. To like enjoy meeting people, to have a cocktail, to go to a networking event. Mm. Um, so it, I definitely think that we just don't give ourselves a pat on the back when we go far. But we also, and I also, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of that. Because I'll do things like, oh, you're in Cosmo Harper's Bar. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not done yet. I haven't reached a million dollars. Leave me alone. <laughs> well, and I think it goes back to what you say. Yeah, and Deshaun is saying, my body loves that you do what you love. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I think it goes back to, right, there's things that we're doing <clears throat> that may be unsustainable, right? But we're doing them. There's a, there's a vision. There's a goal. And, and then we're doing other things and we're realizing this isn't working anymore. Maybe it worked for a little while and it's not working anymore. And so, so part of like personal transformation, right? Part, part of that work is like, what's serving me now? What's not serving me now? And is there another way to do things? Cause you kind of get caught up in like, I've done it this way. And so this is the way that it's working. But I think whether we're talking about how you're running your business or whether you're talking about like how you're living your life, or how you're choosing to be in relationship, it's all the same, right? Which is like, is it working to do this for me? And I think that, 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 you know, even giving ourselves that pause and reflection, right? is something that we don't do because we're just in the thing so hard. And we're not taught like back up, take, you know, take a broader view. We're just, we're just taught to grind, go, go. There is no off the gas pedal. Um, and I think that's kind of the undoing, the overdoing. That's like undoing the masculine, the dry, the, the, the hard way. Like, is there an easier way? Because even when it's, I hear you talk about networking and stuff, right? Like, and I'm not saying that's easy. There's just there's, there's time commitment. But in a way, you know, what I hear you say is like, that's enjoyable to you. You like connection, right? You don't know what's possible. And it creates all this abundance. And it's not like this forced I gotta go get my shit out there and I gotta like network with the right people. It's just like, let me just see what's possible. And that's, that's a different way of doing things. And I think a lot of people as well. I see it. When I go to networking events, I just went to one and there were people who were like the, it was a panel also. So it was one of two people on the panel and they were, now they said, Oh, time for questions. And these two men get up and then they start telling you the whole history of their business what they do and i'm sitting there like what's the damn question like this is not supposed to be a commercial and so as much as i respected their grind to get their business out there i'm like you just mm -hmm. took away you stole time from 50 other people who could have had questions that could have gotten answered and instead of having 10 mm -hmm. questions answered we had two because two people decided that they wanted to do I started my company, I grew up in here, I had this, and I'm just like, when are we getting to the question? Mm -hmm. And I, I just believe that there's a much, the energy that you have will draw the people into you that need to be drawn to you. And so at networking events, I don't necessarily walk around like, let me find somebody to talk to. I walk around like, oh, who else is like looking awkward? Who else looks like they need to pick <laughs> me up? Who else is like looking like they take care of their skin and they're into beauty, who, you know? Ooh, and then you had name badges, and it's like, who works for a company that could potentially be someone I, I found a gamer, which I thought in my head, like, oh my god, it'd be so cool if you had a beauty about the video game. And I don't know what would happen in this video game, like, are we going to hit people with shea butter? I have no clue. <laughs> but I was just like, this sounds really cool, because maybe you might want an app one day, and this person can help you get an app. It was, like, much deeper than just, like, that's a cap, he has capital, you have capital, you have capital, you have capital. It's just like, you know... I do believe there's something such as over promotion. Cause I think people like that, they hear it all day. Like that's their entire day. So when they go out simply saying like from Brooklyn. Yeah. What part? Oh, Bushwick. Oh, cool. Like just like not making, don't overthink it too much. Like a lot of times, you know, you meet people in this happenstance. It just happens. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's so important because what you know, you're, you refer and in a couple different stories, right? Like where ego is driving, right? And like 
where body butter bullets. <laughs> I'm just saying that video game will be well moisturized. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. But you know, I think part of it is, you know, authenticity, right? Like people like really get turned off by certain events because there's a lot of ego involved and there's this lack of authenticity and this lack of like just just emotional intelligence and awareness of like the space that you're taking up when maybe that's not meant for you or maybe like there's you know that space is meant to be more shared um and like it just just hearing you talk about it i think is like there's a different way. Again, I'm just going back to this thread. I, I, like, I'm feeling like there's a whole new tagline that, you know, let's talk. No, um, a whole different way to do natural skincare. I'm just saying. Um, my marketing <laughs> brain's getting turned on. But, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it just feels like so much of what you do is so heart-led. And I know you do a lot of giving back to the community, which I, I know you're very humble about and you don't necessarily talk about. But let's talk about that because I know that what's really important to you is not just – making the you know making the dollar bill but but also giving back to the community and, and and helping those that you can so what is that all about for you i mean i'm very like blessed to be in a family that's full of so many different like everybody's like west indian i think my dad my mom my great my grandmother on my dad's side is is um african-american but it's we were all different shades mm -hmm. and so we never had some of the issues growing up that people have now. And when I look at community, I think that it's okay to have levels to your community. It's okay to be a black woman, have a being black, be, being a woman, being a black woman, being a black Caribbean woman, being a black Caribbean woman from Brooklyn. Like I think there's just so many communities you can pour into and there's so many stories that you can relate to. I've, I've done Meals on Wheels um, and we were delivering in a, apartment complex that was mostly Russian. I couldn't even understand what the hell they were saying. But what I could understand is, you hungry, mm -hmm. we're giving you meat. Like, it's, it's, it's something that I just feel like when you have, I don't have a lot, but whatever I do have and that it won't hurt me or my family to give, I try to give. And I just think that if more people did that, the world would be a better off place. Mm -hmm. I very much believe in, it's okay for you to have your own beliefs. It's okay for you to, do whatever makes you happy to a certain extent. But I do believe strongly in giving back. And I think it's it's part of the human life cycle. Like, I don't understand how you could not. And I'm not saying, yeah, I, I get it. People try to, like, steal, rob. Oh, you feel like maybe you're, oh, you're not really homeless or whatever those feelings are. But there are people out there that are homeless. So if you can help, so I would say you should do it. Um, not just because it makes your company look good, but you should genuinely do it because you're a freaking human being. You know, like, it, it's not easy. I have interns from the Red Hook Initiative, and I'm just like, you guys are a totally different breed of workers than I was when I was your age. <laughs> and I'm just like, I want to kick you out. But it's also growing up, how it was how was I raised? How were they raised? And un being really understanding, like, Hanifa was my all-time favorite intern she now owns her own um food and catering company and i'm looking at her like that's what i'm talking about that's what i do it for that's mm -hmm. who i try to inspire so even if i have 10 other people that come behind me and i'm like you are on my last nerve because you want to be late you want to be on your phone you don't want to have customer service you talk about you don't like to talk but i see you she's talking to your friends and you're like hey yeah. you're kind of like Body butter. i'm like I don't understand. You're not shy. You just don't want to do it. Um, and then homelessness. Homelessness is always something from when I was a child that was, I was never homeless, thank God. But it was, I never made sense to me that you have this whole big ass planet. And then there's people who don't have homes. And it doesn't have to be a fancy home, but you could get a roof. You can get like four walls. It's not that big of a deal. And so that was always like hunger. My mom was always big at feeding us. And it just, I can't eat a meal and think, like, someone else can't eat or find food or healthy food. Um, it just never made sense to me, th that aspect as well. Even when I was a kid, my mom would, like, we had, like, a little apartment in our house. And I used to take all the big boxes that my mom would get from shipping, you know, getting stuff in the mail. And I would build homeless shelters. 
And me and my sister would build a whole little city. My sister's five years younger. We build like a whole little city. We have our Barbies, and I'm like, this is where everybody lives. And that mm -hmm. was always a big goal of mine, you know. Until you get older, and then they're like, that's ten billion dollars to make happen. You're like, I'm gonna start small. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, it's stuff. It's stuff like that. It's like cancer. Mm -hmm. Like that's something that people get, and they're you know, I've heard people say. You know, they've gotten cancer because it runs in their family or they've tried to live the cleanest, healthiest lifestyle. They can't believe they got cancer. And it's making people feel special because I know for a lot of people, their hair means a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's showing like you're still beautiful, whether you have hair on your head or your bald, because there's people with a lot of hair and they ain't worth. Sh mm -hmm. So it's, it's just showing like we're all going to go through experiences that are awful. How do you take cancer and make it? into something that someone else can learn from or grow from. Um, Cause we all go through stuff, the abusive relationships. I've done help with domestic violence. I've never been hit before, but I can't imagine someone that I love beating me. And I can't imagine the blow that that does to your self esteem. So I donated product for um, domestic violence in October, two years ago. And it was, they gave out product to, I think it was like 100 women, 120 women. And I was like, even if I can give you the feeling of, oh, yeah, I deserve mm. an amazing lotion. I deserve an amazing oil. I deserve great body wash. Because taking care of it, some of the self-esteem being broken down means taking care of yourself first. And you're here using, like, you know, not to crap on Dove, but, like, Dove. You walk out, you're like, I'm done. And it's like, did you feel amazing, though? Did you feel great? <laughs> it's like, did you feel that? Or did you feel like I'm clean? Which is great, but... You know, it's, it's, it's part of that. So I, I try to help. I did my favorite one was a foster home that not favorite, but one of my favorites was a foster home and I donated products to these kids and it was trying to figure out what the heck do kids need because they don't want to take care of themselves. They're teenagers. I mean, half of them, you know, it's like, here's deodorant. So it was like, what can I give? And then the foster care system, they can't have candles because they can't light anything. So it's trying to figure out, like, what can I give these kids that they'll love, that they can bring back into these foster homes with them? Um, and it's just, it's giving. I don't understand how you can be human and just not want to help when you can. I'm not saying to give, and it's simple, like, you know, $5 here, a dollar to each homeless person. Um, mini, I literally just gave mini body washes and wish I could give more. Um, but that's always going to be a, that was another reason why I created Navala. It wasn't just... I want to be in the beauty industry and be a model. And like, it was, how can I get back to my community? And that's mm -hmm. a very strong pillar that I try to have a while. always remember to, to keep reaching out and figuring Like I can't always physically show up to everything, but if I can give product, if I can give time, if I can give money, um, I will definitely try my best to do it. Cause mm -hmm. I mean, this brand is a Brooklyn brand, you know, Brooklyn's always going to be my community. It's always going to be where it's where I want to have my first store. It's it. I've lived in all parts of Brooklyn: Canarsie, Mill Basin, Marine Park, Crown Heights, Midwood. It's it's my home, and I want the people in my home to, you know, be amazing. I want them to have a happy life, and I don't think it's it's that hard. It's as hard as we try to make it seem. Mm. Oh man, it's what you're. It's so beautiful what you're saying. You know, and I just can't help but think, and by the way, you're getting so much love in, in you know, for your products um, and your skin, uh, this uh, Karam is like, uh, my skin is starting to look so much better thanks to that body butter of yours. Okay, now nah, clearly that's my next purchase. Um, and yeah, so much love from Deshana and loving your passion and your abundance. And, you know, I think what you're, what you're basically saying, right, it sounds like, duh right like this giving and receiving that flow right like it's just this is part of life this is how we should be living as humans as like humans that need support and community and and that some have and some don't and so how do we cycle you know recycle our gifts and 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 give and receive and give and receive and and also i think you know corporations you've worked for big ones um right have lost sight of like the power that we have as organizations i don't care if you're a solopreneur or you have a hundred thousand employees the reality is you have you have a certain type of power and you can use that power for good use that power for good and that's part of you know why i do what i do because i just feel like it's just a shame if 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 organizations are not using that for good um and and so I just love what you're saying because it's like 
how do we start to bring that more in the fold, more as the expectation? you know as opposed to the the pr campaign that means actually nothing for you it's everything you know yeah, i'm not a, saying it has to be that i'm sorry oh i was like yeah it's very exhausting to see yeah. like for part okay so for me when it, it's it i get it that we're capitalist society i totally understand that but it's just like when you try to like capitalize off of every single you know thing happening and when you do good and i think you should post when you do good things but when you like don't forget we we we're with the, the gays we're with the women we're with the blacks we're with the, it's like oh my gosh this is a lot like just happily give and step back and let people appreciate that and you know for pride it was like people were making fun of like burger king because they gave two two tops and two buns on their burgers and i was like anybody who knows the gays know still one top one bottom <laughs> like one two tops two bottoms <laughs> and it's like but how how crazy is it that you're like we're supporting you but you don't even know how it works it's just it's right. it's just it's this it's an icky feeling where it's just like i want you to support I want to support the things that I genuinely care about supporting. Right. I'm not just supporting because, like, if I support their, the gays, there's money in it. Yeah, it's and the that's... authenticity. It's the authenticity of what you're choosing to do and of how you're marketing that. And people know. They ain't stupid. They know what you're doing. And they know what's what's talk and, and what's not and what how deep you're really going with understanding um, these causes that you proclaim that you're for. So, girl, I am. We could go on about this because that's my but, jam um, right there. This marketing, <laughs> where marketing and authenticity and realness, like, oh my god! But and I, I just want to be mindful of your time talking about like the grind because um, we're at the top of the hour, um, you know. And so I guess in you know, kind of in wrapping up, I just want to ask you like, what advice do you have? Like, or what do you want people to know around? trusting your puzzle pieces maybe it's something you've said before maybe it's something we didn't cover but like what do you want people to know they're on their path and they're just like i don't effing know what is going on right now because i think a lot of people are in that space i mean i'm in that space too to a certain extent because it's like yeah there are a lot of beauty brands out there and it's like okay what's the next step for avala um i think when you and not to say everybody needs to be an entrepreneur but finding your passion doesn't, it doesn't always look the same for everyone. And so don't think because you have a group of 10 friends and all 10 of them are becoming entrepreneurs that that's clearly the path for you. I think you need to trust in yourself and you need to be real with yourself. Like how much time are you willing to dedicate to it? What are you willing to sacrifice? I've sacrificed my dating life. I have gained time with my nephew in the morning, but I don't see him sometimes for days on end. Um, and I think you just need to look at the end result. Like what, at the end result, what is it you think will make you happy? And it can't be a house and a car and a this, and, like what, and for me, it was like, I want to watch my nephew grow up. I want to have breakfast with him in the morning. Um, I saw a lot of people when I worked in corporate get reprimanded because their child got sick. I was like, I don't want that when I have kids. I want to be able to leave my job. I want to be able to take my kid to work with me if I want to. Um, I think you go with your gut. I think people just don't trust their gut a lot. And I think you relax. Like when things don't happen the way that you want them to happen, just relax. It, it's either coming, will come, um, and just fall into it. Because I used to be, like I said, a person who was holding on to everything so tightly and it needed to go the way I wanted to go. And then the more that I relax into things, like when I don't have sales for a while or like my sales aren't the way I want them to be, I'm just like, okay, so now take a break. <laughs> like now you breathe easy for a little bit because when this when the sales do slam and hit you again, you're gonna have to sacrifice and keep up. It's like, you know, just trusting your gut, having faith and work hard. Like don't complain about results not being there if you haven't worked hard enough to get them. But don't kill yourself either. But then do kill yourself. But don't kill yourself. But work hard. <laughs> It's life. It's life's about balance, right? Yeah, so the balance. Like, I was going to say hard, all the balance of it. You know, and I can't help but I, I feel like we need a new sign. It's like, keep calm and carry a Vala beauty box. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and when you were really stressed, burn an Avala candle, put in a shower steamer, cry in the shower with a glass of water. <laughs> well, and you know, I think 
Uh, just one thing I, I, I want to build, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of sexiness and talk around like entrepreneurs and people building their own thing right now. And also it's not for everybody. Right. And there is no right or wrong. It's just what's right for you and what's right for you right now, because we're all in different stages of our life. And, you know, but like you said, it's like honoring, trust yourself, you know, like um, being in the balance, all really sage advice. Like now I feel like we need to do like, you know, uh, ask, ask Alex. Um, <laughs> we're going to have to do a Wednesday session. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> and keep learning. Don't ever stop learning. If you found that you don't know what you want to do. Like I said, I did a million odd jobs. I worked at a gym. I hate working out. I had worked in PR. I was a receptionist, so I got to see what it looked like to do press kits. Um, I worked on Wall Street. I got to see what that looked like. I worked for a litigation funding company. Um, don't stop working. Just work and gives you an insight to like, oh, I don't like that. Oh, I do like that. Oh, no, that's not for me. And think of the work environment you want. When I said I want to be in finance, when I thought about it, I'm like, oh, I'd be around men all day, every day. I'll be probably the only one there a lot of the time and it was like is that what you want and it was always quiet and all you heard was keyboards and it was like is that what you want and i was like no i almost studied for my series seven i was like no uh that didn't look as interesting as i thought it would be and you you're not wrong to say mm -hmm. i deserve better i want to move on one of my best friends has had like five jobs in like two years or something because when she doesn't like it she's like oh time for the next one and she moves on and it's purely because she um it's purely because it brings her happiness and so she's looking for happiness until she finds the company that makes her happy. She is just going to keep looking. And that's all you have to do. Keep looking. Keep mm -hmm. looking for your passion. Keep looking for what makes you happy. Keep looking for the people who make you happy. Don't settle. Mm. I love that. What a perfect note to end it on. Keep looking and don't settle. That's beautiful. Oh my and then you look back, all the puzzle pieces will come in. You're like, ah, I had to go through that to get to this, to understand or appreciate where I am now. See, and then what's going to happen is you're going to, after you're like on, you know, Oprah Super Soul Sundays, you're going to be like, that's why I had to do that Instagram live with Tosca because she was prepping me for like oh. a big interview. Yeah, that's what's happening. First of all, I love interviews. It gives you practice and then also helps me. It helps me with understanding my journey, too, sometimes when I'm talking and I'm like, oh, yeah. And it's like, I'm not saying the same story over and over again. We'll have the questions that you ask. We'll be like, oh, yeah, that happened, too. And, you know, because you're going through life, you forget bits and pieces. And then you're like, after this, I'm going to be like, I appreciate so much of what I've done. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love that. Let it be a, a Tuesday for celebration. I love it. Well, yeah, thank you so much for coming Anytime. on here. For sharing your your wisdom, your story, and your your counsel, it's just I I love it, and I love this theme about just trusting and letting go. So, I hope you let go of this afternoon and enjoy it. Definitely, thanks. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon. All right, sounds good. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone for joining now and after the fact. Appreciate you. <laughs> Ciao for now. <laughs>